This is a uh, Cherry Les Paul Sunburst guitar. It's one of the greatest uh, rock and roll guitars ever made. I just wonder if Les ever had any idea the kind of noise we'd all be making with these things. His, his involvement in recording and guitar recording, he's probably the number one man. To begin at the beginning, I was born in Waukesha, Wisconsin. And at about the age of seven, something happened to me, and I became interested in music and electronics. I noticed this one fellow was winding this wire on his toilet roll. I says, Harry, what in the world are you doing? He says, I'm making a crystal set. That's the newest thing, you know? You can hear radio without it with no batteries, no nothing. That led me into electronics very heavily. So what I did is I stole my mother and father's radio. I took them and used them as PA systems. And then I jabbed the pickup needle into the top of the guitar and turned it on. Instead of playing a record, I played my guitar. I put that on a hollow-bodied guitar. An unwanted condition developed. So you got a string doing this and a pick and a pickup going up and down on the top of the guitar. I'm saying, hey, only one thing should move, just the string. No matter what I played from the early 30s on, I was totally convinced I had to pick something close to a solid body instrument. Somewhere there's music, i the tune. Somewhere there's heaven, high high in the moon. There is no moon above, and love is far away too. I went to the Gibson people, and it took me about seven, eight years to finally convince them that this is the way to go. And I said, okay, and we signed. He says, with one stipulation, we won't use the name Gibson. What do you suggest? And I said, why don't you call the Les Paul guitar? Les Paul came into the picture uh, up until he really started experimenting with recording techniques. The only way you could record was with several mics live on two tracks of tape, and the entire session had to be balanced accordingly. If the uh, horns were used and they were louder than the bass player, well, that meant you put the horns farther away from the mic than the bass player. And after the record was done, there was nothing to alter it. Bing Crosby he asked me one day if I'd record a song with him. And Bing says, sounds fine to me. And he says, Les, what do you think? And I said, I, I don't like it. Bing says, what's wrong with that record? And I says, oh, it's technical, Bing. I says, but there's a lot of things that, that, that I desire that are not there. Then the idea hit me and I said, I know where it's at. It's to stack up this machine with all eight tracks. I can record each part individually. Let's see, I've got my wife, Mary. Hi, well, why don't you grab a guitar and show the people what you can do? All right, I got a lot of ideas. Here we go. Now, that's one guitar. Now, if you want two, I just throw a switch. How about three? Easy. Now, if you want four, switch. How about five? It's a cinch. If you want six, here's a half a dozen of easy ones. He was really an innovator in modern recording techniques. It's almost like he was the person who invented the sound of today's pop records. This is it. This is the sound. 